sur un cache invisible. On jongle avec des peurs, des vies impossibles. Dans une main à colombe. All right. What's up, guys? I'm KBHD here, and this is it. This is our first look, an actual hands-on with the new Samsung Galaxy Fold. So ever since it was unveiled a couple weeks ago, I've been just sort of fascinated by this phone. Like Samsung never let anyone touch it. They never showed it to anyone. They only had very specific demo footage for a while. It kind of felt like a myth, but now suddenly I'm actually holding one. So the basic concept, in case you forgot, Galaxy Fold has one smaller outer screen and one large folding inner screen in a single device for 1,980 bucks. This is my very first impressions of the final phone that people paying this money will actually get. So right off the bat, this phone is chunky. So we kind of saw it coming with other folding phones like the Royale FlexPi and even the Huawei Mate X, but it kind of has basically the feel of two small Samsung phones put back to back next to each other with a hinge in between. And it doesn't go all the way completely flat against each other when it's closed like a sandwich. Instead, they create this little angle, like a small triangle. And then the phone's shape like this folded up is just really tall and narrow. So it's got this like candy bar sort of feel and it's pretty heavy as well. Now the screen on the front, as you might remember, is a 4.6 inch cover display, very tall. And then when you flip it open, you get a 7.3 inch OLED display that's nearly exactly four by three, so pretty wide. Now I know a main question a lot of people will have about this is probably about the crease down in the middle where it folds. So to be perfectly clear, yes, you can see the crease, especially when you're just a little bit off axis or if you have a light wallpaper. And yes, you can even feel it when you run your finger over it. So it's not this perfectly precisely flat uninterrupted glass feel, but honestly it gets pretty close. Like when you're looking at it straight on, you can easily forget about it. And it's again, much better than that Royale FlexPi I saw at CES. Although I guess that wasn't a very high bar to clear. And also I gotta say the actual closing and unfolding movement of opening and closing it is extremely satisfying. I wish I brought my mic to this hands-on so you could actually hear the thunk sound that it makes when it closes. But there's some strong magnets in either half of the phone that open and close and connect it. It's so strong you could actually like pick up paper clips with the phone. But that opening and closing, that thunk it makes, I kind of love that. And the hinge, it just sort of snaps open to a full 180 degree flat position. And everywhere in between those two positions is pretty fluid to whatever angle you want. But it definitely feels like its springs are trying to pull itself closed. But yeah, opening and closing the phone is definitely a two-handed operation. I tried it with one hand. And of course I really, really didn't want to drop it and I couldn't do it. So it's definitely going to be a two-handed process. I'm sure that's what we mostly expected. And actually that process can get kind of tricky sometimes with the interesting button layout. So there's a power button on the side of the phone where you'd probably expect it. There's also the volume rocker and also a separate fingerprint reader for unlocking that doubles as a Bixby button. So it's actually incredibly easy to accidentally trigger Bixby, whether you're unlocking the phone or just trying to fold it or unfold it. I guess that's classic Samsung. Okay, a few other things I did notice. One, Samsung did technically just make a phone with a notch and no headphone jack. Kind of sad, I guess, but it actually does come with their new Galaxy Buds, their wireless headphones, so that's cool. And the notch on the inside screen, which holds two cameras and a bunch of other sensors, actually has this lip to it that's sort of raised up from the rest of the screen. But the notification pull down actually doesn't work from that side when you're unfolded anyway, so I guess it's not a big deal that the lip is there, but you definitely still get it cutting into things like videos and games or really anything that's full screen. And then speaking of cameras, this phone actually has six total camera sensors. So there's the 10 megapixel selfie camera on the front when it's closed. Then you open it up and you get that notch which has an identical 10 megapixel selfie camera with an additional depth sensor like the Galaxy S10 Plus. And then on the back, yes, in a camera bump on this already pretty thick phone, you have the standard, the ultra wide and the telephoto cameras just like the Galaxy S10 had. So you'll never be at a shortage of cameras and lenses here. And you can see just looking at the phone, Samsung had to do a lot of creative things just to get the fold to work like a normal phone. There's some special adhesive in the display and of course the folding plastic that actually folds on the front. They also split the battery into two parts, one in each half of the phone and it's all connected through this very special hinge design, but they still did manage to get high-end specs in there. You got your Snapdragon 855, 12 gigs of RAM, your 512 gigs of storage, not expandable. And then you have your stereo speakers. You still have reverse wireless charging and the combined battery is huge. It's 4,380 milliamp hours. So it's really equipped to actually work and get work done. Now there are two main features 
to take advantage of the fact that it folds. Continuity and multi-window. So the continuity is interesting, but it does make sense. So you do have totally separate wallpaper and home screen layouts on both the front and the back screens. They're independent of each other, but with supported apps, which are mostly Samsung and Google apps right now, you can open them on the small screen, then unfold the phone, and they will continue where you left off on the big screen. And it actually works pretty quickly and surprisingly well, much faster than that one time on stage that we first saw the demo. So I opened the Play Store, scrolled down a little bit, then unfolded the phone, and the Play Store was open and even scrolled down a bit where I left off. That is dope. Another good application for it was Google Maps, which we've seen the demos of on stage, but I tried it. I opened up Google Maps, and I clicked on this business listing, and then when I unfolded the phone, that listing was open where I left off, just much bigger. So I gotta play with this more. I think it also works with YouTube videos and some other apps. I'm gonna test that a lot. That should be really interesting. But that other feature I mentioned is multi-window. And I guess as you'd expect with a huge screen on the inside and 12 gigs of RAM and everything, you can easily have multiple apps open at once. You just have to swipe in from the right side and all the supporting apps will show up and you can have two apps side by side. And you can adjust the size of the window, the border between them and everything. And that's, that's about as far as I would typically go, but you can keep opening and keep bringing in apps and adding floating windows and even more, up to a total of eight apps open at once. And you can have most of them in these sort of floating multi windows. Now, I don't know what kind of person's doing that much multitasking on a little seven inch screen. That person probably needs a full size tablet anyway, but it's cool that they'll let you go crazy and won't limit you up till eight apps. So overall, I'm coming away from that initial hands-on pretty impressed. Like it's always scary when a company announces something, but then doesn't let you touch it. And they don't want you to like ever use it until it's about to come out. So I was a bit nervous about actually being a complete finished feeling product, but it does feel pretty good. Now, if I nitpick even a little bit, of course I'm gonna find all sorts of stuff that's not ideal. You know, the outside screen being the main one, it's so small and has so much bezel. And hearing 4.6 inches doesn't sound that small, but I found it actually even difficult to type on with the keyboard open on the small screen. And then there's the notch stuff being a little bit weird and the slightly incomplete, not quite fold is kind of weird. The price is super high. You know, there's all that stuff, but you know what? At the end of the day, even if you never use the screen on the front, you still get a big screen that folds in half and fits in your pocket. That's the part that feels like the future. And the big screen is, of course, a better camera viewfinder, a better web browser, a better video watching experience. And all of that is super cool. It's a step in the right direction. And this is definitely gonna be one of those phones people actually wanna get in the stores and play with and open, close, and see for themselves if they're into it. But there will also be much more video coverage coming, including a full review on this channel. So if you wanna be subscribed, so you'll be the first to see that, definitely do that below. Also, this is the last day to get in on this merch drop. So if you want any of the new stuff, it'll be, I think, open till the end of today. So within a couple hours of this video dropping, make sure you get in on the merch as well. But that's pretty much it. That's my first impressions of the Galaxy Fold. Definitely let me know in the comments what other stuff you wanna know about it, because if you haven't already noticed, that box right there, that's a Galaxy Fold. And I'm gonna be getting into it for the full review and of course more coverage to come. So let me know what you guys wanna see. But until then, what do you think? Would you get a Galaxy Fold for your full-time phone? Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.